when you look at quality of life, what you need to take, and then does it extend your life or not? It's too hard to tell. If I have higher cholesterol, would it have equaled a heart attack? Would I have already had a heart attack through inflammation anyways? So if I'm sitting here with a raging 10 inflammation throughout my body, and now I'm suppressing it, it's going to come through another way. I did showboat a little too much around my family. I did get COVID four months ago. It lasted a couple of days and stuff like that, not to diminish um, either side of what it is. But I, when I did get it, they were dancing around rejoicing that Mr. <laughs> Bulletproof went down. <laughs> Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, Thursday, day five, World Carnival Month. We have a guest today. I see Martin's in here. We're gonna, where are you? Martin, where are you located? I'm lo uh, located in North Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Okay. Well, I'm not too far from you. I'm just down uh, down near Seattle, so right. not not far away. Well, welcome. Thank you for doing this, by the way. And you've got, looks like an interesting story, so I'll let you get started. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, You know, just basic life stuff, and then we'll get into it. Okay. Um, I grew up uh, in North Van and uh, in England for a while and then back here again. I kind of overall was fairly healthy, fairly uh, active uh, kid all the way until I was into the late teens. Um, the only thing that I had a real struggle with through uh, most of my uh, early adolescence was uh, psoriasis. And um, by age 16, I was probably about 85% of body coverage. Mm which made it incredibly difficult, uh, also cracking uh, joints and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I, I went back and forth through doctors. But as you grow up, what I didn't realize is these little nagging things that you kind of put away to the side build. And in the end, you've got so many things in your bag that you don't realize until once you start stripping off the issues that I had later on. Um, that I realized, holy cow, all these things kind of built up. But uh, I was active up until I left high school, put on a bunch of weight afterwards because I kept eating the same way as I did in uh, school and didn't have the exercise regime. So I quickly put on uh, weight and I sort of topped out around the 210, 215 pound mark and sort of left through my life uh, that way, tried to go on different diets and stuff like that, just as generally kind of thing, uh, wanting to be better. I tried to exercise myself out of uh, some of the eating and that didn't work. So um, I just kept on doing what I was doing and didn't think much of it. I increased uh, my vegetable intake, as you're told to. My parents were very strong in the organic and um, whole foods kind of style. And as a kid, I had an incredible amount of bloating, but I didn't know at the time what it was. I was just, that was me and I had to deal with it. So over time, I guess that kind of uh, built up, but uh, I didn't know anything until uh, basically last, actually two years, 2021, that things uh, were commencing the way they were. Yeah. And, and did you have psoriasis an entire time since since being a kid and then all the way up into your adulthood? Was it still an issue? Yeah. Yeah. I, I had it. It sort of started when I was about seven, eight on the legs and it and I've been and and then it just kind of grew and grew uh, across the body. And it, it didn't like the traditional elbows and uh, knees. Mine rarely did that. Mine kind of went legs, then torso uh, up to the neck and stuff like that hairline. So, and it just, and, and of course the doctor would send me to a dermatologist. So I went to the dermatologist, they gave me a cortisone cream. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening is I put it on to my arm, it cleared the arm, then it popped out on the forearm. So I, the clearing, I just left that alone, didn't use it anymore and put it on the forearm. Then it came back where I was on the, uh, the arm and the forearm. And I just basically pushed it around the body, it's like, but damaged the skin all the way. So when I stopped using the cream, it now was in three places, then six places, then 10. So whatever was in the system wanted to come out through the skin. And no matter how much suppression I did, it didn't matter. It's coming. And so over the, you know, up until about 16, uh, trying to do that method, it covered then uh, basically everything except my face because the I kept on using cream in the face to try to 
keep that down, um, the body was just covered. And I had to use different types of oils just to to have the skin um, not crack and bleed. So that was my major issues that I dealt with through the teen. And IBS then started to come in where it just, if I ate something, I don't know what they, you know, doctors or people would tell you, oh, it takes you seven hours to 10 hours or whatever. And it was like 20 minutes, a half an hour, and things would go through my system. And it was just incredibly difficult. But that kind of came in around the 20 plus. Up until 20, I was pretty good, except for the bloating. So, I mean, it kind of reminds me of the game Whack-A-Mole where you're just out there just, you know, <laughs> trying to whack down the psoriasis with this cream. And then, you know, all this, you know, this heavy use of, uh, you know, corticosteroids on the skin can have a deleterious effect to the skin. It can, you know, it can thin out the skin. It can cause capillary fr fragility and all these types of things. And then, you know, of course, you've got the IBS and we're seeing more and more that these autoimmune diseases seem to have a gut related component to it. And, uh, you know, and, and I'm thinking about what could you eat within 20 minutes that's absorbed that quickly. And it might be a really simple, a simple digesting carbohydrate, perhaps, you know, we know those things can be absorbed very rapidly. And so maybe something with sugar in it or something, you know, simple carbohydrates. Uh, it's very, very interesting. I, I just saw a paper I just saw on rheumatoid arthritis and fiber showing that fiber actually exacerbates um, rheumatoid arthritis flares, which I think is quite interesting through an, in, through an impact. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I also saw something about ankylosing spondylitis in your history. Is that is that also the case? Yeah. yeah so that basically came to a head in October of 2021 is that uh, I went to the fridge late one evening to open the fridge and my back just spasmed, lower back spasmed, and it put me down on the ground. It took me half an hour to get up. And uh, then I, that morning, I went to emergency because I couldn't walk or anything like that. They then sent me that we did scans and everything like that. Uh, I went to my doctor and got uh, trigger point injections into the muscle in the lower back. And we started on the long, painful process of trying to figure out what was going wrong. And of course, I got major anti-inflammatory and uh, painkillers to manage that part of it. And so with the blood tests coming back, the first rounds of blood tests came back. There was like, no, everything seems to be fine. Then they go to the next level and next level. And that always takes about a week or two because of, uh, you know, going in, getting the tests and then uh, following up and then having another appointment. And then my doctor also then said, okay, we're going to do an MRI. So I got an MRI done towards the end of December. In that one blood test came back with an HLA B27 mm -hmm. uh, marker testing positive. Yeah. So my doctor then said, hey, I got some good news. We found likely what you've got. Bad news is that it's uh, um, an ankylosing spondylitis or... So I was like, uh, of course, like every good uh, um, armchair quarterback, I go to the computer, look that up and uh, went uh, and see all the side effects and what my prognosis for the future is. And it was pretty damn uh, grim. So that on top of that, then I was sent to a rheumatologist as well. And because at the December, January point, I couldn't walk anymore because I had started to getting joint pains in the toes and ankles. And then it transferred it also from basically my knuckles to the elbow. My skin was on fire. It was like I had stuck them into um, either burning hot water or whatever. And it was constantly on 24-7. Uh, and so they were like, okay, we don't know what's going on here again. So the rheumatologist sent me to um, more uh, blood tests and special testings and stuff like that. And I think my doctor sort of put his hands up and says, I think you got fibromyalgia. We got, uh, you know, we don't know. Here's what we suggest we do is we're going to put you on an immune suppressant. Mm -hmm. Coupled that with psoriasis, that means it's going to progress into joints. And so this is where we're going to go. Anti-inflammatory and immune suppressants and stuff like that. So January, February, I was at my daily life was pain at 10 out of 10, but it's amazing how the mind can make you get through the day and you become sort of accustomed to this is what it is. But I was at a point where if it wasn't for my family, I probably wouldn't be here today because the pain and the prognosis of future kind of stuff was, that was it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm out. And yeah. it was only that you're going to go 
worse than you are now. It's, you know, never do you get a disease or some kind of prognosis that says, oh, yeah, you know, two years from now, you're going to be all better and everything is fine. Mm -hmm. So that was me in uh, of last year, February, mid-February. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's fair to say you're pretty damn miserable and, you know, you get these, you're right, these chronic progressive di- diagnoses, these autoimmune diseases, and they, they, they're, they're, effectively they're, you're told you're never going to go away. You're going to be lifelong medications, these immune suppressive drugs. I don't know, but in Canada, but they're incredibly ex- expensive here in the U S and of course you have all, you know, what do you think what happens when you sus- uh, suppress your immune system? Well, you're more susceptible to infectious disease. You're more susceptible to cancers and things like that. There's all kinds of side effects that come in, come into play there. And maybe it mitigate some of the symptoms you're dealing with, but it's not, it's not curative by any means. And it's, it's certainly a type of deal. And so during this, you know, psoriasis, you know, treated from, you know, for several decades, I mean, I mean, they do light therapy that, you know, obviously the cortical cream, the anti-inflammatories, you went through all of that at any point. I mean, I'm assuming at any point that anyone has discussed with you diet or lifestyle or any, was that, was that really pushed on you much by any of the physicians? None of the mainstream uh, doctors that I went to talked about anything to do with uh, diet yeah even, um, even the I, I, even the ibs even the ibs which is a gut issue yeah i ibs um one of the guys that i had the gastro uh, guy said you're gonna have to basically deal with and they gave me medication for it i can't remember i have a, a medication over here that i was taking and that basically what it was is i think they said it was for um, lowering cholesterol, but it also binds to stomach bile and mm. there's no side effects to it. He said, uh, you just take it. It's kind of like, tastes like tang, mm. uh, orange. Maybe cholestyramine or something like that, perhaps. Pardon me? Maybe cholestyramine or something like that. I'm just wondering. Yeah. But anyway. And then, uh, that would, that basically helped me get through a day, but not, oh, you got to change your food. I did go to a few um, naturopaths and other other ways to try and deal with certain things. Mm-hmm. And I did go on the candida diet, you know, remove all the I did also uh, go and take a, a go gluten free. And that did help a little bit. So there were different things that triggered myself. And I sort of self diagnosed through most of it uh, because there's the main uh, avenues that I go through, they're going, no, no, it's this, or you're going to go to a specialist. They pump uh, air into you, uh, scope you out. Yeah. Well, you got nothing like that. You didn't have, I didn't test positive for Crohn's. I didn't test positive for uh celiac. So stay away from the stuff that uh, seems to trigger it. And, uh, you know, you make the best of it. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, obviously with, you've got this, you know, some, you know, the HLA B27, you know, is, is well associated with ankylosing spondylitis. If people don't know what that is, it affects the axial skeleton, so the spine, the, the pel- you know, the sacroiliac joints, the scapula, the neck, and, you know, it can be very problematic and become fr- very fragile. It's easy to fracture bones and stuff like that. So how, I mean, as far as functionally, were you still working? Were you, I mean, what were you able to do at this point? I was using crutches to walk. I was still working. But I did transition to doing a lot of work from home. I had it lucky that the work, the company I was working with uh, did not have a good website presence. So I did a lot of web work uh, so I could work from home. So that gave me at least some uh, employment and I didn't have to. Otherwise, if I had to do uh, daily go to work and walk around and do anything like that physically, I would uh, would not have been able to do it. I would have been on short-term or uh, long-term disability um, just to get through. And the crutches, I mean, because you mentioned you had psoriasis and ankylosing spondylitis, usually it's the back typically. I mean, were you having affected joints in the, in the extremities? Was it psoriatic arthritis on top of the psoriasis or what was what was good? Yeah. My hands, the joints in my hands, feet, knees, like any joint. The only thing that I didn't have is the hip I don't know if it's rotator cup, but uh, the hip movement mm-hmm. through uh, the legs. That part didn't uh, give me any pain, but just above it along the belt line was uh, incredibly painful. So there was pain in everything. And then it also, you know, like through the skin of the hands and stuff like that and arms, that was a different, that was like skin and immune issue where just the pain manifests itself in the hands and, uh, and skin. And so I mean, you have cracking skin, maybe bleeding, things like that. Is that going on? Yeah, no, the psoriasis, the funny thing is the psoriasis was a lot less at, at the last year and a half ago. It was, I would say, more elbows, uh, um, shoulders, uh, the main torso, not so much in the joints. The legs as well was strong. But the rheumatologist kind of said to me that it's 
most likely that the psoriasis is working itself instead of through the skin into the joints. So this was the next stage, so to speak, of what you can expect with a long bout of psoriasis. I bet that was a, those are just fun discussions, aren't they? <laughs> oh, sure is going home after that and going, okay, so now instead of being the skin, it's going to be the joints. Yeah. I prefer the skin personally, uh, even though it doesn't make you want to go to the beach or, or anywhere in public. And that was, that was a mental toughness through my, especially the dating years, uh, yeah. in teenagers and, and later on in life. Cause I would hear people say, oh, I got a pimple. And I'm like, seriously, you're worried about a pimple. Yeah. You know, here, let me take my shirt off. And then you tell me if you still want to go into the swim pool uh, with somebody like that. So I didn't do a lot of that. I did. Uh, we did go as a family a lot to Hawaii. Thank uh, goodness we had that as an option. And it always got better with uh, surf and sunshine. Like there was a lot of uh, bettering that way. But uh, it would come and go. And I guess I don't know fully why my psoriasis maybe it was also stress related food related and how the stomach biome was working but it would sometimes kind of go away to almost like hey there's some sign of hey i'm going to be good and then wham it would come back like a freight train and then it would just take over and it didn't matter what i did or what i you know what i stopped eating it would just it would come it would it's like the waves up and down and up and down and that's kind of you never knew so you'd always have to be on your edge. Yeah, I mean, it could be some food trigger, it could be some stress, emotion, temperature, whatever triggers all these things that are occurring. When you're on these medications, you know, the immune modulating drugs and stuff like that, did that help at all? I mean, were you getting some relief with some of these things? Well, funny that you say that is in March or sorry, February, when they said we're going to put you on these medications, those ones specifically immune suppressants and stuff like that. They said I was at that point where I didn't know. And that's where I stumbled upon uh, your podcast with Joe Rogan. And also uh, I saw the TED Talks from uh, Michaela Peterson and what she went through. And I was like, okay, before I go on this, this medication, I said to my rheumatologist, give me a month before I go ahead. Because I read the side effects of everything. Why don't I do that? Because I mean, the, the pain suppressant and the anti-inflammatories did get me through the day. Um, so if I took them, it was great, uh, as in great, it, I, I got through the day. If I didn't take them, they, it did, uh, it wasn't good. So they were helping. I didn't take that super uh, bad immune uh, suppressant. So that's why I was like, all right, I got one chance here. I'm going to do the carnivore diet for 30 days. And then I'll go back to my rheumatologist and say, either I'm good or I'm not good. Mm-hmm. And that's when on March the uh, 3rd, I said, that's it. I'm going hardcore. I don't give a heck what goes on and i put my calendar on the wall and started crossing off the days so this is march 3rd of 2021 2022 2022 so recently so we're less than a year out from this okay so uh so you know six i was five months basically uh in that point at that point with chronic pain got it and so um uh, you see my video on rogan and michaela's stuff and then I mean, were you like, this is crazy when you first heard it? I mean, was there, what, what, what sort of, I mean, were you, I mean, I guess you're just desperate at some point, right? Yeah, that's the thing. It's yes, it was crazy in that thing. I had gone through the gauntlet of all other types. I even was a two years prior. I went, tried to go vegan funny enough. Cause I watched that documentary um, and I forget what it was called, but it, you know, they said, Oh, if vegans away, we got sports teams that are doing this. And at that point, I was just over uh, overweight, 40 pounds overweight, yeah. but I was physically in good shape. And I started doing the uh, smoothies and, and all that kind of stuff, kale and spinach and all that kind of. And I lasted probably a week and my IBS completely disintegrated me. I couldn't keep anything down. I felt like crap. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to make. I said, you know what? Those sports guys may be able to do it. I can't do it. I check out. And, you know, and also that it gave my skin, my skin didn't uh, do well. I just had major backlashes of it. And if uh, one of the things that I've noticed with, with all the food sensitivities that I had, you don't get the response. It's not like an anaphylactic response, like a peanut allergy. And you go, okay, well that I just ate. I got to, you know, take the medication I get. With the stuff that I was reacting to, it would take three, four days before you would start to get the response. So how do you go back into your diet to go, 
was it three days ago that I ate that? Or was it five days ago? And then the wave would hit you. So I would cut out things that I knew that I knew I were sensitive to over the years. And then I would cut them out. But that wave would still be coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. And then it would slowly pull back. But in that process, it's so difficult to eliminate. So when I saw that uh, with your podcast, Michaela, then I did also, you know, follow it up with some Ken Berry and Anthony Chafee and Paul Saladino. I was like, okay, I'm just going down that rabbit hole to figure out and learn as much as I can. I go, all right, elimination makes sense as in there's nothing else you're doing. So you're going to a zero thing start where you know what you're eating. And then I figured, okay, well, at least that way I know within a month, people are saying you're going to find out a result of some kind. So I've done two months. I've done a lifetime of different things. What's a month going to do, especially in the shape I was in? You know, so let's just, I guess, start now. You start carnivore diet and how does it go? I mean, what's going on with that? What, what did you do? How did you approach it? Okay. So how I approached it, it was is kind of probably not the best now that I look at all the things, but I was like, all right, the third, I filled my fridge up with uh, ground beef steaks and that kind of stuff. Took my medication that the uh, anti-inflammatories, all those types and IBS stuff, threw them out. Sorry, I didn't throw them out. I put them into a cupboard, closed the door and said, I'm going to do this. So I want to know exactly what's going on. So the first week was the week of hell and switching over the diet to only meat. And I did still use spices, so uh, pepper and and uh, and whatnot. And the digestive system, of course, because I came off the medication too, was just uh, a bad show. And I thought my IBS was bad already. This was like 10 times worse. But all the things that I read, it's going to take a couple of weeks to get in, uh, in tune. And uh, so at a, on the 18th day, because I wrote this down, because I did journal myself through my process. On the 18th day, I woke up in the morning and everything was quiet. And I kid you not, it was, I woke up and I didn't have to go. I just lay in bed and went, well, this is weird. And then about eight, nine o'clock in the morning, I was like, hmm. Now, everything that comes through to your mind of, I don't eat fiber, now I'm bunged up, this is going to be a nightmare, starts to creep in. Noon, still everything's calm. Six o'clock in the uh, evening, calm. My pain level at that point had gone from 10 to about a seven. So I noticed already in that two weeks, I already noticed the pain dropping off. And then in the evening, I was like, so I had a rough night because keep in mind, if you go five to seven times in the morning, your routine before you leave for work at eight o'clock. And then I myself just stopped eating during the day because I didn't want to have to run to washrooms and stuff. And then I would eat in the evening. Then I would go again. So now suddenly you have nothing. It was quiet. And I was like, okay, so next morning I had a normal bowel movement. And I was like, wow, is this what normal people have as a life is getting up in the morning, having one, and then their fine all day. And so the next day it was, I don't want to say that coming out of hell is a smooth road. I kind of coin it as coming out of hell is uh, there's a lot of potholes and you got to watch your way through it because you're going to hit something and then your alignment's going to fall out. But I was working out of that. Pain levels started to drop off. And, and at the end of 30 days, it was easy to commit to another 30 because my pain levels came down. I started dropping weight and I didn't do it for weight reasons. But I had already come down about 15 pounds of weight. And so everything was feeling good. And even the psoriasis levels started, it wasn't as red and uh, and angry uh, kind of stuff. It was a lot less. So that was basically 30 days in it. And the next 30, uh, at the end of the next 30, I played my first hockey game. I hadn't played in over five months. I played a lot of hockey through my life and uh, and that kind of stuff. So they, my guys said, hey, it's the last game of the season. Uh, you want to come out? And I said, uh, dude, I'll come for the uh, the pregame skate and I'll sit on the bench with you guys because I don't think I'm up to it. I haven't skated or anything. At the uh, pregame skate, I skated around. I was still feeling 
pain. So I was at about five after the second month level, but it wasn't the sharp pains that I had in my feet. They were more dull. Things had dulled down. It was like, uh, you know, you knew it was there. And then, so I skated around, sat on the bench, and then within five, five minutes of the uh, first period, uh, one of our uh, defensemen goes down with a blown ACL, <laughs> and uh, they say, hey, can you take over? And I went, dude, uh, <laughs> and I jumped on the ice, and I didn't look back, and I played the full game, and when I got off the ice, they, the guys literally came up to me and said, what the hell happened? Because you hadn't skated in over five months and you, your form was, your time was a little off, but you were pretty damn good. And I, I said, I don't know. I maybe it was the adrenaline. I'm not sure. The next day I did feel uh, incredibly exhausted. Uh, like I'd run a marathon or whatnot. Uh, the joints were, they were holding out, but it was, I was surprised that I wasn't going to be set back to the beginning again. Because I told myself, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to go hard. I'm just going to do the pre-game, the pre-game skate. But of course, typical uh, male chauvinistic kind of way, I said, yeah, I can do this and jumped in. I mean, obviously, you got to be thinking that's pretty good. I mean, you got this diagnosis where you're going to be progressively crippled the rest of your life. You're in chronic debilitating pain. And now you're playing hockey, which is... I mean, I get it. I mean, yeah, you just want to get out there and compete. It's a lot of fun. I'll go back to life. Yeah, exactly. Go back to life. So, so, five, so two months in, pain levels of five. Psoriasis is getting better. Guts obviously quieted down. Uh, yeah. How does it progress from there? Then, uh, in the third month, is the major change. That's where I was down pain wise down to two, and I went to. That's I had an appointment with my doctor and my rheumatologist, and I talked to them and said, "Hey, look." I'm walking, no more trigger point injections, no more of this medication. I haven't taken any anti-inflammatory. What do you guys think? And they went, oh, okay, well, I guess you don't need to see us anymore. And I went, well, wait, don't you want to know? Basically, none of the two that I was dealing with through all this five months type of ordeal did not care what I had done. They were just happy that things were better. Keep doing whatever you're doing and, uh, you know, maybe schedule in six months to uh, see how things are going. And I was like, okay, don't you like even people that I haven't met because I do outside sales calls at the six months, guys that I'd seen all the time. I walk in and they didn't recognize me because at that point I was 35 pounds down my muscle mass that I built on. And I wouldn't believe myself. If I didn't live through it, and this is why I don't want to over talk it because it doesn't seem possible because if I go through what got better is my pain level is now like zero to one. Some days there's, you know, some joint stuff, but most of the time I am no painkillers, no nothing. My IBS is really good. There are kind of times where things kind of fall apart, but I think that's stress related. Uh, my psoriasis is almost completely gone. I mean, I've got a few little parts and that kind of stuff. My weight is down 40 pounds, but my muscle mass is where my wife has says she's got a new guy. She doesn't know me because for the last 30 years that I've been married to her, I was 40 pounds to 35 pounds overweight. Now I am at 5'10", 175, and I've been rock solid at 175. I did start weightlifting in the summertime just because I wanted to get better and stuff like that. And the joints didn't hurt so much. So I thought, okay, I'll start weight. I would be able to curl, a, you know, a 10 or 15 pound uh, weight. Uh, the last thing I was doing is a 55 pound uh, curl, now, albeit a lousy curl, but I couldn't even lift that at the beginning uh, of the year. So I was like, you know, everything was pointing up and, and stuff like that. So that kind of thing. Um, when I brush my teeth, in the past, I would have occasionally or more than occasionally uh, bleeding gums. No more bleeding gums. Uh, breath is fine. Pardon me, but this is a little personal, but I would suffer from hemorrhoids. And it would trigger big time when I ate wheat to the point where I'd be bleeding for upwards of three, four days. None, No more hemorrhoids. I have a tolerance of sun of about a half an hour and I get burnt. I was uh, working on a deck with my brother. I was out in the sun from 11 o'clock until 4 o'clock, no sunscreen, no shirt on. Normally, I wouldn't 
I would wear a shirt because of uh, psoriasis and everything like that. Didn't uh, didn't really have much sun impact. Smell like uh, sweat smell or or even my nasal uh, like being able to smell stuff. Unbelievable workout recovery. I'll work myself to uh, fatigue in uh, in muscle uh, uh, weightlifting. The next day, only a mild amount of uh, of muscle uh, pain. So I mean, if I didn't live it, if somebody told me that, I would say. I call like Saladino says bullshit and I'd walk away. So <laughs> I have been told by my family members and friends, you're nuts because what do you mean you're only eating meat? That's been probably the most difficult part of it is that every time somebody says, holy crap, you look different. You look amazing or this kind of stuff. He turns around or or they turn around and say, what did you do? I say, I'm only eating meat. They say, Holy crap. Have you checked your cholesterol? Have you checked this, that? And I went, I'm going in now to do a, a blood test uh, a series and stuff like that. But I said, how do I have to worry that I feel 100% better than I did? And I would have to be worried about what I'm doing because beforehand, I would have been on a raft of medications with some significant side effects. And now I'm Yes, I'm only eating meat. I did dial pepper out of the equation and stuff like that because I did feel some issue with uh, with that and my IBS. Maybe I'll be able to uh, add it in. I did read a lot about oxalates in the last uh, three months, so you know maybe there's some play in that. But uh, yeah, there's there's nothing I can say that has been negative other than eating like this is not easy, especially if your family is eating a regular diet. Then you sit there and you miss some of the stuff that uh, that you normally do, uh, enjoyed. And that was hard. I mean, I dumped alcohol already for the most part other than beer earlier because I would get headaches from drinking wine 30 minutes after. And you can really correct yourself very quickly from drinking if somebody hits you to the side of the head with a crowbar after you've been uh, drinking only half an hour. It's not even the next day. So I, you know, so cutting that one out beer and stuff in the beginning of the year, it took me six months to stop that feeling of wanting it. But you know, if, when your partner's having a glass of wine and re, uh, unwinding and you don't have that part of things, you that's certain things you miss just because of it's a social thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, the couple of things that, you know, you it's spoken there that, I mean, the, the complete lack of curiosity by your physicians about what, what are you doing to get better? You know, cause maybe I can apply this to my other patients. It's no curiosity. Well, you know, and, and that's, that's a, that's a real shame. I, I really, I really, I'm, I'm, fr I'm frustrated with other physicians that don't say, look at this, we've got all these people getting better. And, you know, I mean, eventually there's going to be some physicians that get it and adopt it and they're going to, they're going to, and the other ones are going to be dinosaurs. I mean, these are the ones that are just going to keep pushing the, the meds that don't really help. I mean, they help a little bit, but they don't really get at the root problem. And then the other thing is, you know, we always have this, well, what about your cholesterol? And I mean, again, I, I've asked this question so many times. I'm saying, you know, let's just hypothetically suppose that your risk for cardiovascular disease has increased some number, 10%, 20%, 50%, 50% based upon what you're doing. But would you trade that risk for quality of life? I mean, and I, and I think, you know, the answer is probably yes. I mean, but I don't know. I'll let you answer that. No, I, I definitely trade it. Uh, trade it. I think it's always when you look at quality of life, what you need to take and everything like that, and then does it extend your life or uh, not? There's, it's too hard to tell. I mean, if I have higher cholesterol, would it have equaled a heart attack? Would I have already had a heart attack through inflammation anyways? Yeah. So if I'm sitting here with a raging 10 uh, inflammation throughout my body, and now I'm suppressing it and I've know already with uh, psoriasis suppression, with uh, cortisone creams and stuff, it's going to come through another way. So I su suppress everything like that. What's the next kind of thing? I'm going to lose eyesight. Oh, that's one thing that does not improve eyesight. So I still need glasses to read. I thought maybe this carnivore would be bulletproof and I would be able to uh, not have to glasses anymore for uh, reading. That didn't help. And I did showboat a little too much around my family because they hate when I use the word oxalate whenever they have an issue. I did get COVID four months ago. It lasted a couple of days and stuff like that, not to diminish um, either side of what it is. But I, when I did get it, they were dancing 
around rejoicing that Mr. <laughs> Bulletproof went down. <laughs> I'm glad I only went down for a couple of days, but I mean, they, so I have to be careful that just because I feel good not to kind of showboat too much, especially around my family, because they have a long-term memory, whereas mine is short and I'm already off into the next thing. So I did, I did get hit, but I would trade everything away at this point. And uh, actually one thing I was going to uh, say, I have, A lot of people that say to you, well, you know, you do you, uh, you know, everything seems to be fine with me, so I'm not going to do anything about it. If I had known what I know now, I would go back to when I was still feeling good in my 20s and 30s and change. Because the amount of, okay, yeah, eating wise, even if I would just go to a meat dominant with vegetables and some stuff, but I would definitely change what I did. Because once the wheels come off, fixing that is a lot harder than if you're already pretty good and you just have to do a slight adjustment saying, you know what, I'm not going to go on a vegetable heavy or or grains and all this kind of stuff and smoothies and just go, okay, I'm going to dial that back down, push myself into a heavier meat and uh, and uh, animal side of things and do it that way. Because I'm telling you, when the wheels come off, it is an ugly place. And then you're willing to do anything to get over it. And I feel that's where you see all these pop-up things. And that's why people look at it and go, oh, is it really that way? It sounds too good to be true. And in a lot of t- games, cases, it is. Then you're desperate and you're willing to do anything. I, I'd hate to have to be in a position where the wheels fall off and I derail into so many scams and other things that are out there. Nobody can scam you going to the grocery store and buying more meat. Nobody's making money on that, just use buying it at the grocery store. So I'm not buying any uh, extra stuff, uh, not buying any special pills or anything else like that uh, from some uh, company. So it's all by yourself and repairing yourself. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's such an important concept of, you know, because a lot of people that do this diet, I mean, they're 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 in a desperate situation. They've got, you know, 20 years of disease and they're they're just miserable and they're they're, they're I mean, they just don't see any way out. And it's a shame that it has to get there. And I, and I do think I think if people would just I mean, maybe not, you know, it has to be on a carnivore diet in their 20s. But I mean, just get away from all the garbage that we're feeding ourselves because and, you know, and I, and I you know, you know, I think meat is I think meat is a health food and we should be eating as much as we can possibly, you know, afford, I guess, you know, and, and focus on that. And it would probably avoid a lot of people from, uh, you know, developing these diseases, whether autoimmune diseases or IBS or who knows. I mean, there's all kinds of things that we're seeing mental health issues, which are becoming rampant. Uh, IBS, you know, the, the autoimmune diseases are, have gone up significantly in the last several decades. It is running up yeah. and, and pretty soon, you know, it's going to be everybody, you know, has one. And it, it is a real shame. Do you, you know, so, I mean, you describe just eating meat. I mean, is that, is that what you're eating? I mean, you're not including fruit and honey and all this other stuff that some people are promoting. Oh. You're just, just meat only basically. Funny, funny you uh, asked that question because um, Paul Saladino talks extensively about the adding fruit and, uh, and raw honey mm-hmm. and that. So uh, in September, Um, I was feeling pretty good and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try adding something in. So beforehand, it was only meat. I did some shellfish, but predominantly ruminant uh, cow and some lamb. I'm not a fish fan, but I did some shellfish and stuff like that. But it was uh, on occasion. That was primarily what I was having. And I would only eat most two times a day. Just because in the morning I wake up and I would feel good and I wasn't hungry. So I was like, all right, I'll just eat when I feel like it. And usually about noon, I would uh, get hungry and then I would just eat either ground beef or I did dip into a pound of bacon uh, or something like that for myself. And that was when I was losing all the weight. So when people say calories in, calories out, I would beg to differ because at times I was doing 3,500 calories. I worked it out a day. And I was losing at the end of the week, five or seven pounds down, no exercise because of my joint pains at that time. And not that I say, hey, don't exercise, just do it. And and again, if you're doing it for just weight loss, it is a tough mental gauntlet to run because you're going, all right, I'm going to give all this stuff up because I want a better body. And I tell you, I've gone from 215 pounds to 175 pounds your mental state doesn't change just because you have a good 
uh, physique and muscles that look good and everything like that. So you can't continue on that kind of path before derailing. And then, you know, if you don't, anyway, that's a different story. So I did. So when I started feeling better, I said, okay, well, I'm going to try Saladino's way and add some fruits and that I'll do one at a time. So I added papaya, but I used yogurt as my vehicle. So it was kind of like a dessert. And then I got some raw honey and I did that. And again, with any res- response I've had, it hasn't been immediate. And so week in, papaya, check mark, sounds good, everything's fine. Week two, unfortunately, I chose pineapple, and that one hit me in the second day. Bam, full on IBS. It took me two weeks to recover from uh, from pineapple. So I was like, all right, I can do papaya. So I went back to papaya once everything settled down again. And about three weeks in, my psoriasis started to pick up. And I was like, what the heck? Is it from fruit? It can't be. So I cut the fruit out, but I have raw honey and and uh, yogurt. And my joint pain started to come up a little bit. And I was like, okay, well, something's on. And the IBS started to pop up. And I think after looking at that, it was the addition the uh, psoriasis kind of triggered off of the uh, the um, the yogurt, so the dairy component of it, and the fruit um, affected the pain level. So I, I think it was a combination of that my gut level is not ready to go back after yeah. fifty two years of uh, of abuse. So I think for myself is is I've learned that I'm not ready for at least Saladino's kind of. Um, talk about adding you know these parts components back because of the level i was in because i mean i had a lot of problems that i was dealing with and that oh and uh, on a side note blood pressure uh which people always talk oh yeah, you're gonna have a high blood pressure because of the salt uh my blood pressure was uh 138 135 over 80 something uh, i always forget the second number it's always uh, one that i don't look at as much as the first number and now on the couple of times that I've been checking and stuff was uh, either 119 uh, over uh, 72, 125. So I'm right in that, that area. So yeah. I'm, I'm back to just meet again and work focusing in on dialing that back. And now uh, everything has gotten better again. Pain levels are gone down and stuff like that. I do want to stress that, and I use the word stress funny, Uh, is that stress does play a component in things. Mm -hmm. So there's the diet side of things that really did well for me, but the stress component is something that uh, also I needed to, uh, and I still need to deal with. I'm way too sensitive of a guy. Even coming on this podcast today, I was already three days prior to it. I was like, oh crap, Uh, (laughs) it's coming up. Uh, what am I going to say? I feel nervous already. I was like, I I don't know. I'm just going to be talking to somebody. I was like, I'm I'm really thankful that I was able to have his uh, podcast and listen to him. And I kind of followed it. So he's kind of like my guru. And now I got to talk to this guy and he's going to interview me. I was like, ah, crap. <laughs> so, you know, so this morning when I get up, I was like, OK, here goes. And and so anyway, so stress, I am, you know, even though I t- try to be a tough guy on inside, I take everything personally and stuff like that. And so that's a part of what I got to deal with to completely balance everything out. Well, I mean, there, I mean, I'm I'm no one that special that needs people need to get stressed over. I can tell you that, but I mean, it's been you know really interesting hearing your story, and and I think that's an important thing to realize that you know, and I'm fully supportive of people adding things back in, but it may take a long time. It may it may take a year or more. I mean, because you I mean you are obviously pretty far gone. You've got several autoimmune diseases. You know, a clearly disturbed gut. Um, how does it? You know, I mean, I, I guess I mean this is really the first time in your life you've been without. Or, or essentially without disease, I mean, without significant disease, I mean, that's got to feel pretty good, correct? I mean, how's your mental health? 100%. It's been, I can't even admit, uh, begin to kind of express what it feels like because, you know, we live in a society, first of all, where, where a lot of it is skin deep. Everybody looks at you as you're coming in. So now being at my my weight level with my psoriasis basically gone, I feel really, really good. And 
I even with the job market and my company and some of the stresses there, I just have to refocus and say, hey, you know what? In in the level I'm in and with the pain tolerance that I was dealing with to now with no medication, it's it's like I feel like a million bucks. And I want to keep my focus in and not let that diminish. So I know what I came from to where I am now, because I find that a lot of times is we get caught up into the next thing and you're like, oh, now you suddenly don't remember where you're at. So I want to remember that what where I came from to where I am now, not to sort of, all right, forget about it. And now all the little things start popping up. So I feel amazing. I feel really blessed. And I've also kind of refocused my stuff into trying to help others that that run into things. So I talked to, talked to friends and they, I mean, one of my buddies that I met, I hadn't seen in over uh, eight, nine months. uh, I met him at the restaurant and he goes, holy shit, do you have cancer? And I said, why? And he goes, you lost so much weight. You look, and so I thought, I said to him, just because I'm 53 doesn't mean that just because you lose some weight, that means you have a, uh, a disease or like cancer or anything like that. So I found that quite amusing that his response was, you're going through something bad. And then he goes, no, you look really amazing. But I mean, you lost like a ton of weight. And I'm like, so that kind of stuff, when you start to look at the mirror and you go, you know what, I don't have to Photoshop my face anymore. Uh, I don't have to do, you know, take out the blemishes and stuff like that, because you feel comfortable and you look at yourself completely different way. It has been one of the most liberating for myself coming from somebody who had very low self-esteem in that and always played the clown to try and offset that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, if you're overweight and, you know, you have skin problems and stuff, you've got to compensate to be still, uh, you know, somebody in the room. And now I can be quiet. Well, not mostly quiet, but I can, I can quiet down and uh, I can just be, and it's, it's a, it's completely different. I don't know. I still am not comfortable with it. I still feel like the wheels are going to come off or something like that because it's been so freaking good. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I just want to just back to you because blood pressure normalizes inflammation across the body. I'm sure vascular inflammation normalizes. I mean, I suspect those, at least those components of cardiovascular risk have gone down significantly. So that's a good thing. Um, have you gone back to play? Have you played more hockey or just this that one time? Or you, what's what's going on nope. with hockey? How you I started on? the season um, this year again in September, and um, I have moved up in uh, in all of it. I've I had to buy a new gear because I thought I was done with the gear, so I got rid of some of that, and I'm playing at a level that I probably didn't even play. And I'm not going to exaggerate and say I was back in my 20s, but um, definitely uh, playing better than I was playing in my 30s. Uh, at 53, I'm playing in a, a, I was playing in a 19 plus division with a lot of guys that were uh, 20, 22, 23. And I didn't have the legs to keep up. I had a few things. I had size. So I'd wreck guys with my size. I had some pretty good speed, but my hands weren't that great. Now I have a problem because I don't have the body uh, size to blow a guy out with the body. Now I have to do it with skill. And so I've had to learn a little bit more, but my speed has increased immensely. My rebound the next day is where I like, even when I was 50 and 51, it'd take me a week to recover to say, okay, I'm ready to go again. Now the next day I'm up and going, I'm like, wow, did I play yesterday? I played a back-to-back game a couple of weeks ago. Oh no, it would have been the end of November to uh, two games because I got a guy call me in the middle of, or before the, I played my first game to say, hey, can you play the second? And I was like, dude, I only have a half an hour between games. And he goes, oh, you know, whatever. It's it's okay. We're short. And I'm like, that's even worse. You're short. That means I'm going to be on the ice more of the time. And and uh, so I played back to back. That might have been a little bit too much because at the end of that, I was, uh, I was a bit uh, sore in the lower back. And I'm not bulletproof, but... It's amazing because you got 15 guys you play with. And when you come off the ice at the end of the uh, game and they're commenting on how well you've played, because 
beforehand it wasn't going so well you, at least you know it's not yourself that you're looking at other people are saying hey geez you played a hell of a game you're playing this it's just one thing i have to adjust is for body weight loss so at 215 uh going into the corners you can push guys out of the way um because of body mass when you're 175 and you go in the corner and a guy could put straight arms you you're at you're looking at the uh, sky and so i've had to adjust uh, my game to that the change in body weight, but the energy and strength is a whole lot different now. Yeah. I mean, as they're saying, there's no replacement for displacement and, you know, big, big body helps for sure. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, I, I often get the mal de ojo when I go to leave jujitsu, my, my significant other looking at me, what are you going to jujitsu again? I get a little, are you getting any pushback because you're out playing hockey now or is that, or your, is your wife pretty cool with that? But yeah, my wife, uh, she always knew because I was playing a lot of uh, hockey through the years. Uh, she's been, fairly supportive at least in the early part maybe do because it was dating and that kind of stuff so that kind of stuff but kids then came along and so they came down to the arena she's been pretty good on uh on that support and saying hey you know what if it makes you feel better and stuff like that so hockey has been even coming back mentally it's been great because it's kind of like uh you go out you do some heavy physical uh anaerobic uh workout then afterwards you get a chat with the guys. Now it is a bit difficult now because afterwards I don't drink. So it's, it's kind of tough to sort of sit around guys that are drinking beer after a game and, and, and whatnot. But one of the guys brings in uh soda water for me. So I got a can that I can make the same sound. So that feels good. The fizz is there, but there's just no flavor with it. So mentally it's a little different, but at least I'm a part of the guys uh, that are there. And then I go home and it's like, you know what? I left, left everything at the door going in and it kind of decompresses. So the sport coming back and being able to do it, especially after five months of uh, of chronic pain and then getting out of hell and then being able to do something that I thought I wasn't going to be able to ride a motorcycle anymore because sitting for any time period, period of time would be a problem playing hockey i had not because of the impact that you take uh i suffered a couple of concussions through my uh hockey playing career and you know coming out of that and saying hey i feel as good as going back into that time i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't do it and one note when people say it's an expensive um thing to eat meat because i i mean my family still eats regular diet but i don't have any vegetable throwouts. I don't have any medication I got to pay for. I don't have any sauces that are on there. I don't. So when you cut everything else out and you're only going to be on, on the meat, uh, kind of carnivore style diet, it eliminates a lot of extra costs that you don't alcohol alone. I mean, I don't want to say that I was an alcoholic, but I drank a lot of, of alcohols of different types. That's all. I don't have to deal with that. That's a huge savings in in uh, in costs alone. So I I look at the component as okay. I gave up these things. I feel amazing. I'd never go back. And it was easy after with the alcohol. Is easy after what you feel like and how you play and what you've gotten back in life. That I don't need to worry. But the savings there alone was just uh, mind boggling. So I can't imagine. This is after less than a year. I'm at 300, I believe, 300 days plus. And uh, mindset gets easier because you can kind of focus. I'm probably going to continue on before I add more in for another most likely six months before I start tinkering around again just to see if I can add some fruit uh, fruit into it or other things. But I want to get my gut uh, down to where I feel bulletproof, not my family, but uh, <laughs> go with that route. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if we can eventually come up with some way of testing whether the gut is ready or not, rather than just, you know, just random, random sort of arbitrary time time stamps. You know, there might be some sort of indicator. So that'll be interesting as this progress. Well, we are unfortunately running out of time. Thank you, Martin. It's been a wonderful story. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that can relate to this and keep doing what you're doing. I mean, you know, it's a shame your doctors aren't interested in this, but other people are, I guarantee it. And we're going to, you know, we're going to change a lot of lives with this. And so thank you for doing that. I uh, look forward to seeing you continue to see your progress for the rest of you folks. Um, we have another one. He's at 3 p.m. If you're interested, we're going to interview a couple guys from Australia. So they're in a different time zone. So we have to do it then. And then we'll be, otherwise we'll be back tomorrow. So thanks everybody. Enjoy World Carnival Month and new folks. Glad to see you here. Take care. Martin, have a good one. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Thanks for listening.
Hey folks, it's Dr. Sean Baker here. If you guys are enjoying these success stories, well, you can become your own success story. You can do that by heading over to carnivore.diet. You can sign up for a free 30-day trial and get started today. We're looking forward to supporting you. Our community is wonderful, and we'd love to see your success.